Hi everyone, today on the Dangerous Fishbowl channel, I'm going to show you how I put together a tank very economically that's quite beautiful with this fantastic piece of driftwood. So this piece of driftwood um, was actually left by a construction crew at the side of the road. So I, I literally uh, got out of my car, ran over to the, uh, the construction lot and just hauled it away. And uh, I guess they were going to throw it away because it was sitting at the side of the curb. And what a waste that would have been because look at all the little twists and turns in, in this beautiful piece of driftwood uh, and all the places that the fish can hide and plants can grow and so forth. It, it almost looks like the head of Alien on the movie Alien vs. Predator. Um, but basically what I've done, is, as you can see, um, I have actually caulked it to the bottom of the tank. Um, and not just caulked around the edges, mind you. I, I traced around the edge of the driftwood and I filled in the entire area with uh, random leftover caulk. So what, whatever white or, or clear caulk I had, I squirted down there. And then I set the driftwood on top of it. And the reason I'm doing this, and I'm, I, I left it for one week to cure, thoroughly dry out, is because I wanted to make sure that when I fill this tank, it's not gonna float. In fact, the first time I did that, it actually did float, even though it's so heavy, just because of, of the air pockets inside the wood that afford buoyancy. Um, you, you would think that wood would be easy to waterlog, but uh, if it's dense wood like this, it's actually very difficult. So here's the test. Um, we're going to see if uh, my caulk seal after a week is actually good. So uh, this is time lapse. It's 36 times accelerated, but I'm filling the whole tank, which is about 18 inches deep and 30 by 30 inches. So it's about a 70 square. Um, and by the way, I picked it up used uh, on Craigslist. I highly recommend that you, uh, you buy used tanks when you can. There's no reason to manufacture new if you don't have to. And I'm filling it a second time here just to be extra paranoid. But uh, so far, so good. Things are looking good. Uh, it's not popping up. But I'm going to do an inspection from the surface looking down just to make sure that I don't see any caulk peeling or, or starting to fail. And it looks like we have good structural integrity there. Um, you know, the whole thing is submerged and it, it seems to be uh, quite sound. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, fill the tank with sand. Um, and I'm going to just show you in a moment um, how we can do that. Um, so basically the first thing is that we need pool sand, um, which is, this is a bag of pool sand here. And we're actually filling the water on top of uh, the pool sand bag. And the reason for that is because it's loaded with so-called crystalline silica. So I got my, my mask here in case I get a big dust cloud burping out of the water uh, because it's very dangerous to get that in your lungs. But once it's saturated with water, it's quite safe. So we're, we're basically uh, just throwing this all over the bottom, trying to even it out a little bit, not worrying too much about the dirty water at the moment because we can do a lot of water changes. And pulling, pulling out the, uh, the bag itself, and that's pretty much it. And as you can see, it's about one millimeter diameter. Uh, it's basically crystalline silica, like very, very coarse beach sand. So now we're filling the whole tank um, with the sand in the bottom. Um, we're going to add some plants. Now, the, these are just scrap plants from my other tanks, um, and I'm certainly not saturation planting here. So unfortunately, there's probably going to be a lot of nutrients left over for algae. So I'm going to have to change water a lot um, to begin with uh, until the tank stabilizes and I get more plant growth. Okay, so I've also um, put some anubias inside, inside the driftwood, uh, along with some Echinodurus telinus, the pyg pygmy chainsword. And by the way, if you can kind of see it, I've, I've actually clipped the anubias and, and the java moss there um, in, in between the branches and, and the little cracks in the uh, driftwood. And the reason I do this um, is that I don't like to use thread. Uh, J Jacob Castro has a really good video on his channel about how to tie down anubias using thread. Um, the problem, though, is if you do that, then you've got thread everywhere that someday you're going to have to take off. And when that someday rolls around and you pull the thread off, uh, oftentimes you pull the entire plant off and defeat the whole year that, that you waited for the this, this stupid roots to bind. I mean, maybe it's not a year, but it's at least a few months. Um, I, I'd rather just avoid that. So that's why I, I use the nooks and crannies to hold the plants in place um, whenever I possibly can. Okay, next, we got to have a shade bar in front of this thing because, you know, I got four, four beams work LEDs on here, which are really bright. and They're going to blind you if you look at the tank, um, which is no good. So I take this wooden dowel, I paint it black, and I caulk it a little bit at both ends. I don't caulk it in the middle because when you fill the tank, the expansion would cause the uh, caulk to break. So, so there you can see the four beams work uh, LEDs. And uh, this is a nice frontal view of the tank. Again, it's not saturation planted. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've added a Siamese algae eater uh, and actually a little uh, blue spotted uh, sunfish. But anyway, let's get the filter going. Okay, so you can read that warning, but basically it says 
you know, you, you need to you need to wet this uh, pumice. This is white pumice uh, before you before you actually use it. Otherwise, there's a, again a crystalline silica hazard. So we do that. Um, and then uh, I, I do recommend, by the way, as usual, wearing a respirator. You, you really don't want this stuff in your lungs. So I, I'm filling this, uh, this uh, API XPL filter. And API XPL is basically my favorite filter because it's not super heavy and unwieldy when it's full of water, but it's powerful enough uh, to drive a 100-gallon tank, no problem, uh, even when it's you know, configured with pumice here, which slows down the flow a little bit. So it, it can easily handle that kind of capacity. Um, I have an entire video uh, on pumice filtration linked in the description, so you can see that as well. But the, this is basically quarter inch to three eighths inch pumice, so there's enough uh, space between the, the pumice rocks for water to flow really well, but there's not so much that it's gonna clog really fast, so you get excellent ammonia neutralization, but in my estimation, you'd probably only have to service it with, once every six months or a year, so it just saves a lot of labor. Um, okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm going through the trays. You want the trays to fit really snugly, but you want them to click in. So you want to fill it as, as high as you can with pumice to where uh, the next tray is still able to click on the uh, tray below it. So that you get, a, you get a really snug fit because what you don't want is a lot of loose pumice stones kicking around and then getting into your impeller and stuff. Um, okay, so here's the XPL. Um, it comes with this kind of hose, which I really hate because it, it crimps and you know blocks itself really easily. So unfortunately, I have to waste that. And uh, instead, I use this vinyl hose that I got at Lowe's. You could probably get it at Home Depot or other home stores. 5 8 inch interior diameter, 3 8 uh, or I think 3 quarters exter exterior diameter, outer diameter. So, um, so here's the, the inflow and outflow pipes I'm assembling um, with, with the suction cups and, and the strainer and all. Um, and I made one little mistake, but we'll come back to that in a bit. All right, so let's put the uh, motor on top, of the, uh, on top of the canister filter here. And we're going to connect the vinyl tubing. Uh, now, unfortunately, this stuff is really rigid, uh, which, is, which is good for not crimping, but it's really bad if you want to attach it. It's very difficult. So you're going to have to do this another way. So I, I pull off the, the little inflow outflow interposer. I attach the hoses and I click it back into place and everything looks good. Um, except uh, this, this outflow pipe, by the way. I want the outflow pipe um, on the shorter end of the tube because I want it to outflow very close to the surface. So uh, fix that problem. Okay, so anyway, back to the tubes. Um, you can see it's really loose and it's crimping. Um, that's no good. So we're gonna make it not, not tight, but, but relatively relatively tight. So we're gonna have to cut it down to size and leave, leave just a little bit of slack. So that looks good. They're tight, but not super tight. Everything looks okay. Let's plug it in, see if it works. And here we go. Okay, yep, it's filling with water. Everything looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the, uh, the power head, the aerating power head there on the left, and then the filter outflow on the right. And notice they're both pointing in the same direction. We don't want the currents fighting with each other. And then hidden in the middle is, is the intake, and that's all hidden behind the driftwood, so you don't really see it from the front. By the way, I've sealed, uh, using electrical tape, I have sealed the shade bar, the, the center where I did not caulk it. I sealed it so that it doesn't blind you. So here's what the tank looks like right now. As I mentioned, this is not uh, saturation planted, so I'm certainly going to have to fight algae blooms for quite a while. Uh, that's my, that's my blue-spotted sunfish, by the way. But it gives you an idea of the layout, and uh, definitely I will post updates on this tank in the future. I plan to uh, probably use it in the 2016 Aquatic Gardeners Association contest, but, but you know, we'll see. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, put any comments or questions in the YouTube uh, description below.